On Monday, uh, there was a serious incident that happened at the uh, Monday Night Football game um, where DeMar Hamlin uh, collapsed on the field. Uh, we've been hearing a lot of different reports about what the condition was, and I thought I'd turn to the person that really knows it all, and that is our good friend, uh, Dr. Rizek here with us, uh, two-time Emmy Award winning Dr. <laughs> Rizek, we have to say with the procedure. Um, but we were just at a football game together on uh, Saturday at the Michigan State TC, uh, Michigan, I'm sorry, University of Michigan. Look, I almost got in trouble there with the University of Michigan. Michigan, not Michigan <laughs> State. And so we were watching the game there. Uh, we saw those young guys out there playing. And all of a sudden, Monday night, this incident happens. And, and the thing is, um, this incident was something that is, is just so, I mean, gosh, heart-wrenching when you see this going on, not knowing what's happening. Um, on the field, and I think we, we see when the players went down and everything um, and seeing what's going on there, there goes DeMar Hamlin um, on there, and there goes the incident that went took place. It was chilling. It was it chilling. It was chilling to watch It, it was, and, and then there goes all the P trainers there right there working with him. Um, but what's very interesting, I have to say, is that this is not the first time this has happened no. in football play, actually while a game's going on. You were telling me back in 1970, you actually were at the Detroit Lions game. Watching the Detroit Lions game, October 24th, 1971, a receiver for the Detroit Lions named Chuck Hughes or Charlie Hughes, great guy, uh, got hit in just the right way or just the wrong way and probably had a similar event. What is different now uh, from, from back then, we have all kinds of emergency medical equipment and technology on the football fields. Back then, we didn't. We saw them giving this wide receiver who got hit in the chest CPR, but he died. Yeah. He died that day on the field. Oh, it was uh, scary. Fortunately, in this, uh, what happened Monday night, he didn't die, and it looks like there's great hope that he's going to survive this. So this is very interesting, and we're going to bring up this first slide because this shows where DeMar was hit, which is something that, again, is... is once in a lifetime, you could say in a way, right? Well, f a couple of things about this disorder, this heart disorder, and that is it is rare. We see less than a couple of dozen cases of this a year in the United States. That's the good news. The bad news is three-quarters of the individuals who experience this die. And it results from, as you can see on this picture, a blow to the chest, a blow to the chest at just the right location and at just the right time during the cardiac cycle when the heart is beating. You see this in hockey, a puck will hit a player, or in baseball, or in karate, a blow to the chest will result in this, this lethal arrhythmia uh, most of the time. And, um, and because we're not prepared for it, Three quarters of the patients die. Yeah, and we see this other one here a little bit more of what's going on here, um, and it's interesting just watching this. But I want to go to the next slide because this is what's. Or go ahead. What, do you what this slide shows, if you could go back, go back one, one slide, sorry. it's not only occurs in 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 baseball and in football and a hockey puck hitting the chest. You see the bottom picture there, a fist. It's it's not uncommon in karate to take a blow to the chest that can predispose to this. And even with, I'll be saying, when kids are playing around or, or guys who are just fist bumping each other or gives that punch in that chest is thinking like, oh, I'm gonna make you a man, that could actually do it too, correct? One of the cases, the only case that I saw as a physician was two individuals drunk in a bar and they wanted to see who could hit who harder in the chest. Wow. And the one got hit in the chest at just the right time, just the right location, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. And he had this lethal arrhythmia. Oh my goodness. All right, let's pull up this next slide because this is what you're talking about right here. And if, if you look at it, the, the waves and everything is, is so incredible here. What this is called, this disorder is called commodio cordis. Now, what does that mean? For those of us who went to Catholic school and needed to learn Latin, commodio uh, is the Latin for disruption or agitation. Cortis, referring to the heart. So it is a disruption of the regular rhythm or electrical activity of the heart. And if you could bring that slide up, 
what you see is, let's say your heartbeat is 60 beats a minute. That means your heart beats once every second. There is a 40 millisecond window, and you see it on this EKG here. The blow has to be in just the right place during this 40 millisecond window, which will predispose to commodio cordis, or instead of the normal rhythmic beating of the heart, an arrhythmia called ventricular fibrillation. Wow. Now why that's important is you have the upper chambers of the heart and the lower chambers and they beat in synchronicity with ventricular fibrillation. The heart neither fills with blood nor empties the blood appropriately so you're not getting forward flow of blood to the brain and other vital organs and you pass out. Yeah. And if you don't interrupt this yeah. Three quarters of the uh, time, a person will die. Even so, with good CPR, three quarters of the time people yeah. will die. We have another slide here because we were just talking about that, and, and that's the moment of impact and everything that goes on, which, again, this is just incredible, uh, all the different things here that, that happen. Let's go to the next slide. What, no, we, what, we, oh, what go this ahead. isn't, if you look here, this isn't damage to the heart muscle. That's the misconception that people have, that it's damage to the heart muscle. It isn't damage to the heart muscle per se. It is a blow to the heart and it interrupts the, the, the electrical impulses of the heart. That's what this does. Yeah. And that's what commodio cortis is. Oh my goodness. Uh, it, it's so, and there goes a normal um, rhythm and then this is when, right. what happens. On the top, you see the normal rhythm. And do you see that big spike on the top? When the blow to the chest comes right after that, that tall spike, when the heart is contracting, the bottom uh, rhythm, ventricular fibrillation, is what results. And it, again, it has to be the right blow in the right place during this 40 millisecond window of vulnerability. And that's why it's so rare. Wow, amazing. Um, and I want to talk about what they did with him on that field, which saved his life. Again, what we, what that we, we didn't did, see back in. Right, what we didn't see back in 1971 is people trained really well in, in CPR. And now the NFL has uh, emergency medical technicians, uh, doctors on the field, people very good at performing CPR and uh, defibrillators so that they can shock the individual out of the arrhythmia. Here you can see a defibrillator. You know, if you go to the malls, you'll see the Zoll or the defibrillators in the mall for uh, catastrophic events like this. The, the key is to do very effective CPR to keep blood going to the brain, and as soon as you can, put the two paddles on the chest, one the right upper chest and the left lower chest, and shock the patient out of this lethal arrhythmia. And even in the best of hands, with uh, on-site personnel well-trained in CPR, the mortality rate with this is still 75%. Doctor, this is such great information to have, especially with everyone trying to figure out what happened out there and stuff. Um, we did get reports that he is awake, he's writing. So with this, will he recover? Will he be able to get back out on the, on the gridiron, do you think? Well, I, you know, uh, would I ever go back on the gridiron after something like this? I, I, I doubt it. If this were a family member of mine, would I advise him not to? We don't know if certain individuals are predisposed or if this is just a chance happening. Uh, but uh, I understand he asked, did we win? And the people responded, <laughs> you won the game of life. Yeah. May I make one, uh, one recommendation? Everyone needs to know how to do CPR. Everyone needs to learn how to do CPR because you don't know when a loved one uh, may uh, experience a cardiac arrest. And, you know, uh, I, I think the, the malls and, and, and the stadiums have been great about having the defibrillators, the Zoll defibrillator. Learn how to use those defibrillators because you never know when it's, uh, it's, uh, you're going to be called on to save a life. Yeah. Doctor, it's always great. Oh, it's always Thanks great for taking to see to the you. Football, the Michigan game. You know, we have to. You have to understand. We have this Notre Dame, Michigan rivalry. So whenever I 
bring up that. We play again in 2033. <laughs> I know. Uh, but we also are planning on hopefully another procedure. Uh, you know you can go to aztv.com slash procedure to see the two-time Emmy award-winning show on there and also learn more about uh, what the doctor does in the heart world, which is so important. So It's great to see you. I've missed, missed you. you. I know. I've missed you, too. We'll have to get together. All right. All right. So there you go. All right. Come on back. we got more of the mix right after this.